this is Joy Louise. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you're already a part of my tribe, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna be talking to you about a condition called lymphedema. But before we do that, if you have not already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, click that notification bell so that you never miss an upload from me. Let's get into this video. So first, I want to talk to you about what lymphedema is. Lymphedema happens when there is damage to the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system helps to move white blood cells. Um, it also helps to flush toxins out of your system. So many people contract lymphedema when they have surgery in regards to or in relation to uh, breast cancer. So that has to do with removing the lymph nodes um, from like under the arms. Um, and some people get it in their arms and hands where their arms and hands swell. And other people get the swelling in their legs. I want to take you back to when I was a little girl and just kind of the stories that I was told as, a, as I got older and this condition started to worsen. So my aunts would always tell me that I had an ankle that was larger than the other. So my right ankle was always um, just bigger. Not so much that I would complain about it hurting, not so much that it would swell, but just that it was noticeably just a larger ankle. <laughs> um, fast forward to high school, I actually enrolled in a singing competition with um, three other girls from my church. And that was the very first time that I realized something was wrong. Um, we had all been outfitted in um, garments to wear for the competition and the only bit of individuality that I had was my hair and my shoes. Um, other than that, we were all wearing the same outfit, literally. So it was a gray skirt, a gray blazer, and a pale pink um, blouse. And I hated the look. I can't even tell you, like, I hated it. I think about it all the time. I think about how much I just wanted to wear something else, you know? like. I was in high school, I was super into fashion, I was into Project Runway, I just loved fashion and it was such a huge way for me to express myself. And the only way I could do it was through shoes at that point. So fast forward to the day of the competition, really excited, and I go to put my shoes on and they had sort of like a snap that you would have like on a, on a winter coat um, or even that you have a, like a buckle not a buckle, but like a strap on the front of your jeans. So it kind of just buckled that way. So there was no way to secure it around my ankle. And it went on. But as I got up to walk, they would snap open. And I looked down at my ankle and I noticed that it was extremely puffy and swollen. And my mother was there with me and I remember looking at her and I just started crying because I immediately knew what was happening. My mother has the condition as well, um, and hers is, I don't want to say it's bad because my mother is very mobile, she's able to get around, she works a full-time job, um, but it does, um, it does impede, it, it, it really does impact her everyday life, and she is in pain, and it is difficult. Um, so yes, I was afraid of it becoming as bad as my mom's, but I also didn't know what to do. Um, luckily, one of my group mates, she and I wore the same size. She didn't bring a shoe with an ankle strap, she had a pump. So I was able to obviously wear shoes. So we averted that fashion crisis. <laughs> but my life after that day was forever changed because being a girl who was so into fashion and in all areas um, I knew that shoes at that point were going to be an issue for me by the time I got to college I 100% knew I wanted to be a fashion designer so I started doing what I needed to do in order to start that journey I enrolled in school um, started taking those classes started learning how to sew how to drape how to create patterns and I knew that I always wanted to do something for full-figured women we've come so far in the industry but I know that 
there's so much that can be done. That is kind of where I started and I especially wanted to be able to encourage full-figured women that suffered with the same condition that I had. That they didn't need to hide their legs, they didn't need to essentially not wear certain things because of this condition. As I got into college, I, you know, sometimes it's inevitable if you're not in any sports programs, you're gonna gain weight in college. It's just, it's just part of the process. So what happened was I ended up gaining a lot of weight in college and it negatively impacted the lymphedema for me. So I thought, um, and then also many family members would tell me, hey, if you lose weight, it'll go away. So I started a weight loss journey in July of 2011. And over that time, it was like an eight month span of time, I lost 80 pounds. And to my dismay, it really did not stop the lymphedema. Um, at that point, I had no idea what it was. Um, I just thought, oh, I'm eating poorly, I'm overweight, this is why it's happening to me. I didn't understand that there had been damage done to my lymphatic system and regardless of how much weight I lost, without the proper care and the proper manual drainage and the proper massaging and just being ignorant to what my body was going through, it definitely made me feel like, well, why did I lose this weight if it wasn't gonna help? Fast forward to today, I'm sitting down doing this video because for the past three months, I've seen a lot of improvement in my right leg. Um, and I just wanna share it with you guys. I think that once you find something that works for you, that it is important to encourage other people. So for me, I really started to, once again, pay attention to what I was eating um, not so much for weight loss, but just because of what my body may have had issues with processing. I stopped eating out in general. I started to really cook my own food. I started eating more uh, high fat products. Um, and what that means is I started eating eggs, um, fatty fish like salmon, avocados. Um, I discovered MCT oil. So many things that not only helped with the swelling and the drainage, but I also used to really suffer from really bad migraines and it had a lot to do with what I was eating. And once I changed and developed a better lifestyle in regards to what I was putting into my body, I noticed an overall change even in my skin. So it is important for me to share that with you guys who may be suffering with the same thing. I don't want you to think that it's easy. It is very difficult. We all love a good cheeseburger. <laughs> We all love so many different things, um, but you shouldn't have to feel like you can't eat those things. So the biggest things that I have changed is like, perfect example, I love pizza. I still have pizza, but instead of using like a, a white flour, I'll make it with a coconut flour or an almond flour. And when I tell you guys, it tastes so good, um, not kidding. I still have my tomato sauce, but I make sure that it's sugar free or there's no added sugar. Um, sugar is also a huge um, no-no for me, um, at least with the white sugars. I've substituted my sugars with like monk fruit. Um, I don't like stevia too much. It has a weird aftertaste, but um, I'll use it every once in a while. I've also been trying out coconut sugar, which I didn't even know that was a thing, but my body has been reacting to those really well in regards to my lymphedema. I encourage you guys to research compression stockings. I have been discovering some really cool companies that do really fun prints. Um, I'm super into polka dots, leopard prints, snake prints. So it's like, I don't know. It's kind of cool to be able to wear something that's gonna help your lymphatic system work better and for it to be cute, right? So that is one thing that I definitely encourage you guys to do. Um, my mother has also been working with a lymphatic massage therapist. I definitely encourage you guys to do the same, but before you get into, um, 
any specialist massages or anything to do with your lymphatic system, I definitely want you to check in and get that confirmed and approved with your primary physician. Uh, there could be, you know, anything happening in your leg, um, blood clots or any other life endangering situations that we don't want to worsen your health. Um, so I definitely recommend you check in with your primary physician first. And I want you to guys know that I'm, I want, <laughs> I want you guys to know that I am here for you. I know that this condition is not the easiest to deal with. You know, it can be managed with the right care. I definitely want you to stay tuned. I'll be bringing you more wellness styles of videos and telling you more about my life stories with this condition. So make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you never miss an upload from me. And I will see you guys soon. Bye. The